you talk about the Jenkins process, automate the Jenkins process using Python Jenkins API. So how many of you folks know Python? Yeah. So we will be using the Python module for it. And then we will try to try to show how to use those APIs to create or modify those Jenkins or even the adding, modifying or deleting a slave. So this uh, particular session is actually kind of a demo. I will be, I'll be showing you something uh, using the Python notebook. How many of you know about the Python notebook here? So yeah, so I'm really using the Python notebook. It's nothing. It's a web hosting. Okay, oh, IPython. How many of you know IPython? Yeah. Anyway, you know Python, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that's. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, last two talks we already attended. Everybody talked about why we are using CI. What is the benefit of the CI system? And so I think I'll just go and skip that because you know very well now, you know. Because so why so in, in our organization why we use it? Because we want to make make the flow agility. We we want to deliver the product on time and it should be the product. So and yeah, and because Jenkins provides a lot of plugins for it. So we even do the code for the sanity testing uh, or checking. So like for Python, um, we use PyLint or Packet for check the guidelines of the Python code. All right. So why we are using Python? Python. So, okay. So how many of you know here that there are so many other APIs to talk to Jenkins? Because Jenkins already provide the REST APIs. Right? So there, there are all the languages which, which are kind of the wrapper of that REST API, even the Java or the Ruby. So how many of you know the Java wrapper of the Jenkins API? So, yeah, we love Python because it's... it's yeah. Because, because it's too easy, right? You just have to import the module and you are good to go. So here you can see. So why this guy is flying? Because he, he just import the anti-gravity module and now he's just flying. So it's, it's that much easy. All right, so now I will be talking about why we are actually here to use that particular Jenkins Python API. So in our daily process, we may face some kind of situation where we we have to we have to automate the process using that some kind of a restful API. Like you have a you have a long shell script or some other language shell uh, script or some programming language. So you are you are just going to coding it, and in between you need to execute some kind of a job, some kind of Jenkins job. And the result which that Jenkins job gives to you are rely on it, right? Or the the output of the Jenkins job because Jenkins logs everything. You you are relying on that particular. Thing. So okay, so just just assume that I have a process. I I am writing a script. In between, I have two different variables. Let's say x and y. And those using those variables, I have to execute my Jenkins job as a parameter. And then. The, in the result, I am getting some kind of a Z variable. And I am using that Z variable to again start something else. So even in Jenkins, what we can do, we have downstream and upstream jobs, right? Yeah. So in the Jenkins, we have downstream and upstream job. What we can do, we can assign some kind of upstream job, take the variables, break the script there, and then start the downstream job. How many folks you use that that downstream upstream job configurations? Right. So I think you are you sure that what, what I'm going to talking about, right? All right. So 
Yeah. So I'm just giving an example, a demo example, how we are, how we, how it's important. It's important to using the Python Jenkins API to to automate the build script right now. So this is the notebook you are able to see right now. So the people who know the Pythons, you know the we have we, how we import a module, right? I'm just going line by line. So uh, here is my first one. And yeah. so I am importing, so it's a Python uh, API. So I am importing this particular API. And then I have the Jenkins server which is running on my local host. So that's a Docker image which is running as a local host. That's a Python. That's a Docker image of the Jenkins. And yeah, so my job name is the test job. Yeah, I can see, you can see that this is the Jenkins which is running. This is the job here, it's a test job. And please let me know when, I will stop if you have any questions in between. Alright, so I have a different function. What the function which is defined here is build job. It will take the parameter and it will it will take the parameter, execute the job, and the return the, the logs of the particular job. I have I have a dummy function here, para, which will only return a dictionary, which will take the string one and string two. And yeah, now I can I have another dummy function which pass the log. Right now I didn't write anything here. I just printing the logs. Now let's start. So. So the parameters will be taken from the params job and the log will be the parameter. So if I start, I, if I will build this job or I will run this script, what will happen? It will contact to the Jenkins, it will run that particular job, it will take the output and return back to me. So, uh, so right now if you see, last success build is two here. One I'll, once I will start the script, it will execute that particular job and the job page number will be the three. Okay. Here you can see the star, it means the job is running. Here you can see, alright, so it's the, the job just happened. This is the output of a particular job and here you can see now there is no star, it's already executed the job. Same output you can see here. Alright? So, so here what I am trying to say is if you have, if you, if you want to manipulate the logs here or if you want to take some kind of string from the logs and you want to start some another job, you can do it right here, from here. You can pass the log, whatever the details you want, you can return that particular details to another function and then execute the another job. So you don't have to go manually creating the jobs in the Jenkins from for the upstream and downstream and then execute the job. You can directly use it here and, yeah, and run the job. Okay, so this is the this is the uh, where it fits in. Now I will show you the, what are the other capabilities which this particular API have. Yes. So, so the Jenkins object which we created in the first place, which is this one. So once you connect to the Jenkins server, it will create a Jenkins object for you. Now, this will also support the authentications for you. So if you have the username or password, it will provide the username password capability. So, if you see here, it, it takes the arguments like base URL, which will be the your Jenkins server URL, then username if you have any, password, requester, and the name and it will return a Jenkins job object. Now, since uh, 
the particular server which I am running on the Jenkins, it doesn't have any kind of authentication. I am not providing any kind of a username password here. But but if you if you have, you can provide it, and it will it will give you the Jenkins object, and after that you can manipulate. It. Now this is a very simple. So what's this object? What's method this particular object have? So if you if you want to see what version Jenkins right now, you just do j dot version. It will provide you the what version of the Jenkins you are running. Now the Jenkins objects method. So if you see here. I, I just did a help from the Jenkins object. It will show me what are the methods that particular objects contain. So if you see here, what what we can do with this particular object? See, if you see here, base server URL, it will return the base server URL of the Jenkins. Build job, if you want to build a particular job, what parameters do you have to provide the job name? And if it will contain some kind of parameter, then you have to provide those parameters. If you want to copy the job, you can just directly use j dot copy job, which is the job name which already exists, and the new new job. If you don't even have a job, you can even create a job using job name and the config. So here the config is the XML XML configuration file which Jenkins maintain. So once you create the job in the Jenkins, even the using web UI. It will in the background. It will create a configuration file over it, right? So using same kind of a configuration file, XML file, you can even create the job for it. Now, so many folks are using the slaves. So some job, some of your jobs will be running on the slave, and you are getting results back. So you can even you can even create a slave. Here we can use the create node functionality, so which will take the name of the slave, number of executors, what will be the node descriptions, and all the stuff. And it will return, it will return a slave object where you can even see that particular node is or slave is online or not. Because before you execute some job on that particular slave, you have to find out if that particular slave is running or not, right? Yeah, you can even delete a job. So all right. So why why we are talking about here? Because we don't we don't want to go in the web uh, web UI for the Jenkins for do all kind of operation. We can use that API and we can we can easily manage all those things through the API itself. You can even get the artifact uh, yeah artifacts data from the From a particular job or from a particular ID, or so there are so many things which we can do. I mean, I there's a lot of functions around 30, 40 functions which is incorporated with the Jenkins object. So you can even try out yourself. Once you are importing that particular Jenkins API, you can create the object, do a help on that object, and you can find out all kind of methods to work. All right. Now, since we are talking about the adding, okay. Right, okay. So, first point is clear. We will, we can use the username and password for, for and both support for the Jenkins Jenkins instance. So, if we have the username password, we can also get the same Jenkins object, providing the username password to the particular method. We have, we can even find out the sub version for a particular job which is using and search find the builds of a particular. So, like assume that you have you have configured your Jenkins job using a Git repository, and you want to find out a which version or which which particular port ID you are using right now for the Git and which build it is using. You can do that also. You can add, remove, or query for a for a slave. You can check. You can add a new slave. You can find out this slave is actually right now in online or offline. You can even remove the slave. Use uh, so so the Jenkins view you know about the Jenkins view is something like 
So this is the view. Like the dash view, you can add as many view as you want. So you can do same thing using the Jenkins API. You can add, remove, or modify a particular view. So now here, if you see. If you see here, I have one slave added. This is the this is the very basic slave, and it's not it's even offline. It's not doing anything, right? What I'll do, I'll just delete it. I'll just delete this slave. Now there's no other slave. Now what I'll do, I'll here, I'll come here, and I'll create a same slave. So using the APIs, what it will do, it will create a slave. The, the IP or the DDNS, if you want to give, you can provide. It will take that number of executors. The node description, I will put it like this is a dash. And the label, I will put this is a dash. And once it it's executed this particular line of command, it will return a slave object for you. And if you do a help on the slave object, you can find out there are multiple methods on that particular object. So we have again a lot of methods which you can manipulate for a particular slave. So here we go. It's created the slave object. If you see here, here it's scale, right? It's created the slave object. Right now it's offline, it's okay, because I didn't have the SSH query and and it's because this 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 host is on Docker and I didn't configure the SSH port. So but yeah, but actually it's created the slave object. Now if you see the slave objects method, you can see here it will return if you see if it is online or offline, you can use this thing and it will return a boolean for it. If it is online, it will say true. If it is offline, it will say false. If you want to check if it is a temporary or offline, because we have the capability to do a particular slave as a temporary offline or online, you can even check those things. Even you can check if it, this slave is idle right now or not. Here you can see. Okay. I just checked that its particular slave is online right now. It's returned me the false stem, which is which is right because it's it's offline right now. Now if if I want to go it to the temporary offline and then set it to online, what it will do? It will try to set this this particular slave as a temporary offline and then try to bring it online. But because we don't have the configured the SSH key rings, it will throw an exception. In the Python, we, we know about the exceptions, how they will throw the exceptions. We can we can manipulate the exceptions also. You can see here the exceptions in the SSL here. Why? Because this slave is still offline and we are trying to set it online. So, yeah, so this is all about the slave. How the how we can add a slave, how we can delete a slave, even we can modify the slave, we can add more description. If you want to change the description, we can change the description of the slave. Or executors. So in the API we use the node actually. The node is kind of an abbreviation of the slave. We can, if you want to delete a particular slave, you can use the delete node and the name. Here you can see the node name will be the slave name.
please let me know if you have any questions till now and then we will go through again with the with the job configurations and we are trying to add a new job on the Jenkins using Jenkins API and then uh, what we will do we will execute the job with the parameters because it provides the parameter capabilities and we will get the results back to that after that we will we will talk about artifacts and then we will talk about the views. So if you have any question till now, let me know, we can even go through it. So see what we did actually, we are trying to delete a, delete a node or slave which is already deleted uh, or which is not present. So what it will show, so the exception which will show in HTTP error. So what it means, it will not able to find a particular slave there. Job. So if you see here, 
if I do a help on the job object which just created, you can see there are so many methods. So in the Jenkins, using web UI, we can also disable or enable a particular job. Same way, using API, we have the methods for enable a particular job or a disable a particular job. We can even get a build of a particular, for using a particular build number. Since we just created the job, we didn't have any kind of build right now to get the build. So it will just give us an exception that it doesn't have any kind of build. So, so there are lot of methods here. You can see there are lot of lots and lots of methods which, which you can use to manipulate your job. Now, what I will do using particular job object we just created, what I will do, I will update that job using a new XML file. So this is my new XML file which contains some more stuff like parameters of a job. So we will make this job is a parameterized now, which is not before, which was not before, and we will update the configuration. So, so the same way we are open the file handle and read the updated configuration file of XML and then update the job. And now, because this new job, this is the object which we created and it's provided a method for the update config. So what it will do, it will take the updated configuration XML as a string and it will update particular job. And load config means it will load the configuration. So once we, we are updated the configuration and we will rerun the job, it will take the updated configuration. Now, yeah. now question. you can see this, this job has become parameterized. Can, can I ask a question? Yep. So you're showing how you can update the entire configuration by passing in a new configuration. Right. Are there any options to those methods to just add build steps or post build steps or parameters programmatically without actually throwing XML at, at, at the uh, configuration? So, so you mean to only update the parameters, only update the parameter instead of updating the, the whole configuration file? Correct. No, so no, it actually as a as per as per method, it's always take the configuration file as a parameter, as a string parameter. What you have to do always you have to update the configuration file and then push back to the object. It will create the so it will update your job configuration directly. So we don't have right now, but if you want so this is an open source project again. If you want to add something, you are most welcome there. You can you can propose that particular change or if you want to work on you can work on. So, so what we did actually now it will become a parameterized job. You can see here it will take a different parameter, string parameter is there, file parameter is there, and yeah, we don't have the source code. Anymore. Now so how actually we are how we can give the parameter to the job, build it using the parameter. So what we will do, so for the for the string parameter it's quite easy. We just so it will take as a dictionary as a as a argument. So whatever things you have, whatever parameter you want to use, it will come as a dictionary, which will pass to the argument as a data. And then for the for the file parameter, for the file uh, So here you can see there is a file parameter. So the, for the file parameter, you have, to, you have to take the file in the file object and then you have to pass it. So here what I am doing, I want to pass in that particular data file to run that particular job. So what I will do, I will create a data file file handle for that particular file and then same thing I will pass here. This is also a dictionary. If I have more than one file parameters, let's say I have one is the project or on another is the another dot conf and then I want to pass it in the file so this is a dictionary in the Python so I just I have to add one more like whatever so the 
same way, right? And then I can pass it. Since I don't have it now. And the build parameters, you can see it's also a dictionary, where you can see the build parameters in a dictionary, which, which I'm providing the same parameter which I defined in the job. And there's an important thing the block here. What it means, so what happens, if this is a false, the block is false, what happens, the Python will not stop. So Python executor will not stop your, till your job is complete. What it will do, it will go to the next step. But if you set it to true, what the Python object, what the Python executor will do, it will, it will stop till the job is complete, till the job status is complete. So like assume that you have a job which will take 15 minutes to execute. So it will stop till 15 minutes and then get result back to you and so that you can process that particular result after. So that's a very important parameter we have. So what defines the limits for the block? Sorry? What defines the limits for the block? Limit? Yeah. Oh, it's a, so it's, it's have maximum limit like how many seconds, how many minutes you can define it. So if you, if you check, if you check the block parameters, or if, if you check the invoke parameter, it, it, it has the limits parameters, right? Yes. I think the default is 200 or something. So if your job takes longer, it throws? Sorry? If your job takes longer than the time, it throws? So, so you can define how much, so what happened? So this, this parameter actually stops till the job is complete. Even if it is taking longer than time, yes. so you have, you have an estimate time with you, you can define that particular time. And then, <coughs> all right, so, so using those things, I will again invoke a particular job. There's some error. Here you can see star again. So it's building the job. Till it's finished, it shows it star. It means it's in the progress right now. So here you can see, I think it's building. So we have one first build ready. You can see the output of whatever the parameter will pass here. You can see here, all the parameters are there. And it took that parameter and executed the job. Now, when you invoke the job, it will again return an object, which is the running job. Here also you can check if the job is still running, or if it stop, or it is successful or failure. So this is the particular job invocation, uh, invocation class, which will provide you the all the methods. If you see the gate build number, it will tell you which build Right now, it will give the build number here. In our case, it will give two a one here. You can see here, <coughs> this particular job is running right now or not. So it will give a boolean value, true or false, if it is already running or it's successful or a failure. If a job is stopped, it will show the, yes, the job is stopped and So these, these are the particular. Yeah. Can you manipulate the job's position in the queue? Sorry? Can you manipulate the job's position in the queue? In the queue. So you have a lot of job. So what you can do using the Jenkins API, in the Python you can put your all the jobs in a kind of a list, right? And then using a particular list you can iterate through it. And then every iteration, right, it will execute that particular job. But once we once we set the block as a true. It will it will run the job completely before executing the second second job or third job in the queue. So that way you can even configure the queue here. All right, and then whatever the results you get, you can manipulate the result inside the particular function. What was that a yes or a no to the question? Sorry. Was that a yes or a no yes, to his yes, question? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay, it was a yes. Yeah, it, it, it was yes. Thank you.
So, but you use the Python Python thing to to make those things work. What I, what what his question is? Can we do a job queuing for the particular API using particular API? So, what for the job queuing? What you need is you have the, all the jobs in a list, right? And using that list, you can iterate a particular job. So, his question was, the pending jobs can they be re reordered differently? Uh, is that a pending job? Can I manipulate the jobs that are already on the queue? Oh, already in the queue. Pending, the pending ones. The ones that are not executing yet. That, so you have the objects, every job. So whatever job you have right now, you have job object associated with all the jobs. Using that job object, you can, you can manipulate that particular job. If you want to, like if you want to update some configurations in between before executing the job, We can talk offline. All right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so those things all about the job, how the jobs <coughs> configurations and how we can build the jobs. Now we go into artifacts, how we can get and build the artifacts, even the create a new artifact here. Not so I, I mean, we want, so if a job is run, we configure that we want a particular Java or JAR file to get back to us, or we, we can deploy it, right? So, so all those things we can do using that particular API. So what I will do right now, we have the job ready right now, and I am using the particular build number of the job. So once I will say that get build, it will return a get build object. Using that build object, I can get all the artifacts associated with that particular job. Alright. Here you can see. So what happens here? That's what I'm talking about. So if you see the, the artifact object type, it's a generator. So we have so we have to iterate through it, right? Because in the Python, when we have the generator, we have to iterate through it. And when we iterate, so every next method will give us another object. Using that object, we can get whatever we want. So what I'm here, if you see, I'm iterating through that particular artifact object, and I'm taking, I am printing the artifact objects what's the method is contained. So these are all the methods. So if you want to save the artifact here, so there is a save method. You can provide the, you can provide the file path where you want to save that particular artifact and then run it. If you want to save it in a particular directory, you, you, you can even specify the directory path so it will actually what it will do, the directory should be exist before you want to save it, otherwise it will throw an exception. Okay. This is the last topic about you. So so same way 
we initially when we started, we created a Jenkins object. The Jenkins objects have a lot of method, which will again provides a different different object to us. In that method, we have view view method also, which will return the objects of the view. So here, if you can see, um, all right. So if you see here, we have one view test view here, right? What I will do, I will just put another view there. And I will add that job in that particular view and then you create. Alright, so if you can go back here, you can see we have another view here. And if you can, if you if you go in that particular view, we have the tag job added to that particular view. Right? So we can manipulate the view. We can even if you want to delete a view, there is a delete view options in the Jenkins object. So let's So in the view actually, it's, we have the delete directly here. So once the view object is created, so it, it will contain all the all the parameters. So you can modify a view object also. If you want to add a, another view in that particular view object, you can use the add view functionality, which will you can provide the Jenkins uh, the job as a string, or otherwise it will take by default. So if you want to check, so we we can have the national view also. So the nested will return a dictionary type of thing, which you can again iterate through the dictionary. Yep, so that's it. Okay. All done. Okay. So now, where you can find the source, it's all on the GitHub repositories. Right now, this GitHub repositories contain 130 star and it, it has a lot of forks. It is actively maintained, so what's its release cycle is, so they, they release it like very often, like twice in a week or so. Once in a two weeks, for a, and they have the stable release also, which will they put in the PyPy. So this is the PyPy URL where you can find a stable release. How we will install it, it's, it's pretty easy. If you know the Python and if you know PID, this is very simple command PID install in the particular API. Otherwise, if you know easy install, you can use the easy install to it. If you are using a Linux system like Gradle or Fedora, you can use yum as a package manager and then install the Python Jenkins API. Or if you are using Ubuntu, so there is a package manager called AppGet, you can use that and install it. Now, if you have some kind of issue, or if you find out some kind of query, or if you want to provide some RFPs for it, you can, we have a tracker here. This is the tracker. You can put your issues, and people will do that. Documentation. So the, all the objects which we talked about, and all the APIs we talked about, all are documented here. Documents are not up to date till now. So people are working. So you folks can even work with upstream to update the documents. So the folks are working to update the documents. Right now what we are doing, we go through the source code, we check what this particular function or method is doing, and then we are iterating. Yep. Any questions? Thank you.